Hello everyone, and welcome. I hope you like my Cheshire Cat cosplay. I was going to do something fun today. I was going to read you some Alice in Wonderland. I hope you enjoy, and I hope you enjoy this story time. Now, this is from the chapter Pig and Pepper. Of course, I had to pick the part that has the Cheshire Cat. <clears throat> Please, would you tell me, said Alice, a little timidly, for she was not quite sure whether it was good manners for her to speak pat first, why your cat grins like that? It's a Cheshire cat, said the Duchess, and that's why pig. She said the last word with such sudden violence that Alice quite jumped, but she saw in another moment it was addressed to the baby and not to her. She took courage and went on again. Um, I don't know I didn't know that Cheshire cats always grinned. In fact, I didn't know that they could grin. Oh, they all can, said the Duchess, and most of them do. I don't know of any that do, Alice said very politely, feeling quite pleased to have got into the conversation. You don't know much, said the Duchess, and that's a fact. Alice did not at all like the tone of this remark, and thought it would be well to introduce some other subject of the conversation. While she was trying to fix on one, the cook took the cauldron of soup off the fire, and at once set to work throwing everything within reach at the Duchess and the baby. The fire irons came first, and then followed a shower of saucepans, plates, and dishes. The Duchess took no notice of them, even when they hit her. And the baby was howling so much already that it was quite impossible to say whether the blows hurt or not. Oh, please mind what you're doing, cried Alice, jumping up and down in agony of terror. Oh, there go his precious nose, as an unusually large saucepan flew close by it and nearly carried it off. If everybody minded their own business, the Duchess said in a hoarse growl, the world would go round a good deal faster than it does. Which would not be an advantage, said Alice, who felt very glad to get an opportunity of showing off a little of her knowledge. Just think of what work it would be to make the day and night. You see, the earth takes 24 hours to turn on its axis. Talking of axes, said the Duchess, chop off her head. Alice glanced anxiously at the cook to see if she meant to take the hint, but the cook was busily stirring the pot of soup, seemed not to be listening, so she went on again. 24 hours, I think, or is it 12? I, oh, don't bother me, said the Duchess. I could never buy figures. And with that, she began nursing her child again, singing a sort of lullaby to it as she did so, and giving it a violent shake at the end of every line. Speaking roughly to your little boy, and beat him when he sneezes. He only does it to annoy, because he knows it teases. Now the chorus in which the cook and the baby joined, wow, wow, wow. While the Duchess sang the second verse of the song, she kept tossing the baby violently up and down. The poor little thing howled so that Alice could hardly hear the words. I speak severely to my boy. I beat him when he sneezes. 
for he can only thoroughly enjoy the pepper when he pleases. Wow! 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 Here, you may nurse it a bit if you like, the Duchess said to Alice, flinging the baby at her as she spoke. I must go and get ready to play croquet with the Queen. And she hurried out of the room. The cook threw a frying pan at her as she went out, but it just missed her. Alice caught the baby with some difficulty, as it was a queer-shaped little baby, and held it in its arms and legs in all directions. Just like a starfish, thought Alice. The poor little thing was snoring like a steam engine when she caught it, and kept doubting itself doubling itself up and straightening itself out again, so that altogether for a minute or two, it was as much as she could do to hold it. As soon as she had made out the proper way of nursing it, which was to twist it in sort of a knot and then keep tight of its right ear and left foot so as to prevent it from undoing itself, she carried it out into the open air. If I don't take this child away with me, thought Alice, they're sure to kill it in a day or two. Wouldn't it be murder to leave it behind? She said the last words out loud, and the little thing grunted in reply. It had left off sneezing by this time. Don't grunt, said Alice. That's not the proper way of expressing yourself. The baby grunted again, and Alice looked very anxiously into its face to see what was the matter with it. There could be no doubt that it had been very upturned nose, much more like a snout than a real nose. Also, its eyes were getting extremely small for a baby. Altogether, Alice did not like the look of the thing at all. But perhaps it was only sobbing, she thought, and looked into his eyes again to see if there were any tears. No, there were no tears. If you're going to turn into a pig, my dear, said Alice seriously, I'll have nothing to do with you, mind now. The poor little thing sobbed again, or grunted, it was impossible to say which, and then went on for some while in silence. Alice was just beginning to think to herself, now what am I to do with this creature when I get home? When it grunted again so violently, looked down into its face in some alarm, this time there could be no mistake about it. It was neither more or less than a pig, and she felt it would be quite absurd to carry it any further. So she set the little creature down and felt quite relieved to see it trot away quietly into the woods. If it had grown up, she said to herself, it would have been a dreadfully ugly child, but it makes a rather handsome pig, I think. And she began thinking over other children she knew who might do very well as pigs. And was just saying to herself, if only I knew the right way to change them, when she was startled by seeing the Cheshire cat sitting on a bough a few yards off. The cat only grinned when, Alice, when it saw Alice. It looked good-natured, she thought. Still, it had very long claws, and a great many teeth, so she felt that she ought to be treated with a respect. Cheshire Puss, she began rather timidly, as she did not know whether it would like the name. However, it only grinned a little wider. Come, it pleases so far, thought Alice. Then she went on, would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? That depends a good deal on where you want to go, said the cat. Oh, I don't care where, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you go, said the cat. So long as I get somewhere, added Alex. Alice added as an explanation. Oh, you're sure to do that, said the cat if you only walk long enough. Alice 
Alice felt that this could not be denied, so she tried another question. What sort of people live over there? In that direction, the cat said, waving its right paw around, lives a hatter. And in that direction, waving the other paw, lives a March Hare. Visit either, if you like. They're both mad. But I don't want to go among mad people, Alice, Alice remarked. Oh, you can't help that, said the cat. We're all mad here. I'm mad. You're mad. How do you know I'm mad, said Alice. You must be, said the cat, or you wouldn't have come here. Alice didn't think that proved it at all. However, she went on, and how do you know you're mad? To begin with, said the cat, a dog's not mad. You'll grant that. I suppose so, said Alice. Well then, the cat went on, you see, a dog growls when it's angry and wags its tail when it's pleased. Now I, growl when I'm pleased and wag my tail when I'm angry. Therefore, I'm mad. I call that purring, not growling, said Alice. Call it what you like said the cat. Do you play croquet with the croquet with the queen today? I should like that very much, said Alice, but I don't believe I've been invited yet. You'll see me there, said the cat, and vanished. Alice was not very surprised by this. She was getting used to queer things happening. While she was looking at the place where it had been, it suddenly appeared again. By the by, what became of the baby, said the cat. I'd nearly forgotten to ask. It turned to a pig, said Alice quietly, just as if it had come back in a natural way. I thought it would, said the cat and vanished again. Thank you so much for listening to my story time. If you'd like to hear more, let me know in the comments. Suggest a cosplay or a story time. I'd love to do it for you. But until then, have a wonderful evening and remember, we're all mad.